In this video, we're going to see a couple of examples of valence bond theory diagrams for uh, a couple of molecules. Uh, we're going to be interested in uh, drawing the valence bond theory diagram for H2 and F2. All right, to, balance, uh, to draw a valence bond theory diagram, what you have to do first is identify the atoms of the molecule and their electronic configurations. Okay, so we start with H2. The first thing that you need to do is write what the electronic configuration for the separated atoms would be. Okay. The next thing is to uh, uh, draw the atoms separated, okay, without uh, uh, forming a bond. Right. So you would have an atom uh, H, okay, and the other atom H right here. And again, they're still not forming the bond. And what you like to do is draw uh, the atomic orbitals, the wave functions, because again, the key in Van Zandt theory is that is the overlap of those orbitals of those wave functions that gives rise to a bond. So you need to identify what those wave functions in separated atoms are. All right, so uh, here we have um, H, and that is a 1s orbital and has one electron. And then uh, the other atom, H, uh, the electron, is also in one, uh, 1s orbital. So the one is going to form when these two wave functions, okay, the separate atoms overlap. Okay, so uh, you can draw the molecule as this. Okay, there's an overlap of the two wave functions. And again, because uh, now the two electrons can be shared between the two atoms, that gives rise to a covalent bond. Okay, this still has uh, the labels of 1s and 1s. Actually, a key of valence bond theory is to say that well, when the bond is formed, those electrons still have wave functions that are the same or very similar to what you actually have when you have separate atoms. Okay, so these wave functions are still going to be the 1s wave functions. Okay, and again, the bond is just uh, uh, emerges because of an of overlap of those atomic wave functions. Now, something that is important about uh, this valence bond theory diagram is that, in this case, the overlap uh, takes place uh, head-on. Okay, so if you actually take a look at the internuclear distance, okay, you can see uh, uh, that actually the bond, the overlap of the wave functions, takes place right along the internuclear uh, distance, okay, uh, uh, or head-on. This is what is called a sigma bond, okay? So, uh, this is the... Uh, Valence bond theory diagram for the H molecule. We have the overlap of the atomic fu functions. Uh, the wave functions are well labeled. Notice that the two electrons are now in their same region of space, so they must have anti parallel spins, right? Uh, uh, this would be an incorrect diagram if you actually drew that the spins are both up, because that would violate the Pauli exclusion principle, right? So they must be uh, uh, anti they must have anti parallel spins. And then we're also like labeling here what type of overlap is this. This is sigma. As you can anticipate, it will be pi, delta, and so forth overlaps that we will see in other molecules. Right, so this is H2. Let's move on to a different uh, example, which is going to be uh, fluorine 2, to see how that molecule would be uh, represented in the context of a balanced bond theory diagram. Right, so again, F2, the first thing that you do is draw uh, or write the electronic configurations, you look at the periodic table, and this is going to be helium, 2s2, 2p5, okay, for each one of the atoms. Helium, 2s2, 2p5. When you have uh, more than one electron, so when you're not the, uh, when you're thinking about atoms that are not the hydrogen atom, it's also uh, useful to draw something that is called the box electronic configuration. Okay, so you take the balanced electrons, all right, and then draw uh, the orbitals as boxes, okay, and then you write the electrons with the appropriate spins. Okay, so that will be uh, your 2s orbitals, those will be your 2ps, and then the 2s have occupations like that, and the 2ps have these occupations. Okay, same thing for the other atom, two electrons, and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, it looks like uh, what is going to happen in the F2 molecule is that we have two, uh, two p orbitals, okay, one in each atom, uh, that have only one electron. So it seems natural that the overlap to form a bond would happen between uh, these uh, atomic orbitals that are singly occupied. Okay, so uh, let's see how that would work. And right, again, uh, when we go to the uh, Lonas Moth theory diagram here, we draw the atomic orbitals of separate atoms, and we have to draw here only the balanced electrons because the core electrons, these Electrons that one is twos do not participate in bonding. Okay, that will be your two s wave function with two electrons. 
and then uh, this will be uh, one of the two p's. We're going to call this the x direction, so that will be the two p x, and it has two electrons. And then we will have the two p z. Okay, this is the one that is singly occupied, two p c, only one electron. And then we have the two p y's, and two p y's will be perpendicular to the two p x and two p c, so they will be coming in another plane. This is a little awkward to draw in two dimensions, so the way that we do this is just uh, something like this, right? This is to signify that uh, that orbital will be coming in and out of the plane. Okay, the other atom would be exactly the same. Okay, so that would be the 2s with two electrons. That will be uh, exactly the same label as before. So if I've chosen this to be the x direction for the first atom, it should also be the uh, x direction for the second atom. This is um, the z direction, where you have only one electron, and then the y direction is coming in and out of the plane, okay, and that orbital uh, has two electrons as well. Okay, so those are the two separate atoms, and again, what we have to do now is see how uh, the wave functions overlap uh, once you bring these atoms uh, together. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and then draw it closer to this atom and draw explicitly what the uh, overlaps between the atomic orbitals are. All right, so let's draw here the fluorine atom. And again, I have the 2s uh, orbital. That is, I mean, this 2s orbital is, is already doubly occupied. The 2s orbital is doubly occupied. There's not going to be any overlap uh, between them because then you would have a, a violation of the Pauli exclusion principle. You will, you will have too many electrons in the same region of space. Okay, uh, we can draw the 2px uh, for this orbital. That is your 2px for this atom. And same thing here, there's not going to be an overlap between this orbital and that orbital because uh, there's too many electrons. You already have four electrons in the same, you will have four electrons in the same region of space. And that would be a violation of the public exclusion principle. Now, with the 2pc, we can have an overlap, right? Because in between the two orbitals, atomic orbitals, you only have two electrons. And again, that satisfies the Pauli exclusion principle as long as the spins of electrons are antiparallel. Okay? So here you have a bond, that's an overlap. And notice that the overlap occurs right along the internuclear axis. Okay, it's a head on overlap. So this is a sigma uh, overlap, it's a sigma bond. Okay, and then we have the 2py uh, orbital, which is doubly occupied. And again, and there's not going to be any overlap between these two orbitals because there would be too many uh, electrons in the center region of space. Right, so that is the bonds, uh, bonds of theory diagram for F2. Uh, the way that we understand the F2 bond is to say that, well, the F2 bond is formed by an overlap between two singly occupied 2p uh, atomic functions. Okay, that's uh, the bonds of theory diagram. In the next video, we're going to explain the N2 uh, Vines Moth theory diagram that gives rise to not only sigma overlaps, but as we will see, also pi type overlaps.